Yeah, Coach, any um, excused absences for minicamp today? Uh, not an excused absence. Deion Jones was here yesterday for his physical, but we've excused him council vote. For, a fi for a family uh, matter. On so day one. Somebody's uh, unmuted, but uh, d -Light, that that'd be, he's, he's excused. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> what are your goals and objectives going into this mini camp? And what would you, you know, really like to see from the, from the ball club? Yeah, it, for us, it's a continuing uh, process of what we've already started with this off season. Really, obviously, it's a mandatory minute camp, but the rules are very similar to what you guys have been out here for the OTAs have seen. We're still in the teaching and learning and development stage of this offseason. Uh, we've got certain players that, you know, may be out there, may not, because there are different phases of the offseason program. And really, our objective is to keep continuing to attack this playbook, get used to each other, communication, and really ultimately get ready to go when training camp starts and be ready to roll September 12th. So that's kind of the process D-led. It will, it will be very similar to what you guys have seen from OTAs already. Jeff Schultz. Hi, Arthur. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of talk about uh, Julio since the trade. I know you weren't available to talk. Could you just talk about um, sort of the impact of not having him in the offense, how long you've been thinking about it, and, um, yeah, just the general impact of that? Well, I mean, first off, you know, like I said earlier, you know, we got a lot of respect and appreciation for what he did here. Uh, wish him well in Tennessee, but my really main concern is our roster and getting us ready to go for this fall. So um, as for any player, you got to have contingency plans, you know, where, where your depth chart, uh, where your swing tackle. So you're constantly looking at the roster and, and you have a plan of what you think it'll look like. But like we always, all of us know in here, if there's 100% injury rate in the NFL and you've got to be able to adapt. So we're constantly evaluating the personnel groupings we got out there and there should be good co competition and really great opportunities for every guy out there on this roster. Obviously, I know we're only in mini camp. We're not even tra in training camp right now, but how confident are you in terms of um, the offense, you know, being able to be productive in, in 2021 with, I'm, without, without him, basically. Jeff, I, my concern is the guys we got on this roster. Uh, I've dealt with a lot of different uh, situations week to week in, in my experience in Tennessee it doesn't matter if they're going to roll the ball out there. We're going to kick off. There's going to be a game to play. Our objective is go win. Uh, you know, no different than when you're dealing with the COVID issue last year with Buffalo. I think we had four wideouts up that game. My job as a coach is to get us prepared to play, and we'll, we'll do whatever we have to do to win that game. So that's kind of how I look at it. And I don't worry about players that never coach, Jeff. So, Michael Rothstein. Hey, Arthur. Uh, going, kind of following out a little bit, at what point did you start putting together contingency plans that did not have Julio Jones in them? Well, for any player on our roster, you, you've got to make sure that, you know, whether you're looking at the quarterback position, backup quarterback, tackle, who's your swing tackle, guard, who's going to be over there at center. I mean, that's every position. So we really looked at the entire roster. So. And y'all have y'all are playing the Tennessee Titans in that first preseason game. Are there going to be joint practices between the two teams beforehand? Has that been discussed with you and Mike? Uh, not with the Titans, and that was discussed before any of the trade went down. So we will have joint practices, but it won't be with the Titans. Who will it be with then? Uh, Miami. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Charles Odom. Uh, during the draft, way before this, uh, the Julio thing became uh, became final, there was a lot of talk about Pitts being a hybrid player, not just a, a tight end. Does this open more opportunities uh, for him to be moved outside in, in, in two tight end sets and to play in, in what could be like a hybrid receiver role? Well, we'll use any of these guys that are versatile out there. We feel like we got a lot of versatile pieces, whether that's Hayden, whether it's Kyle, whether it's Cordell Patterson, I mean, we got a lot of different guys and it'll be great competition in every room. So I've never looked at it like it's, uh, you know, fantasy football. Here's your 11 personnel. Here's your 12. Like we're, we try to mix and match and that's how we'll play. And I just wanted to ask you about about Tajay Sharp and, 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 and um, what he can add to this offense. Sure. Obviously, I've got experience with Tajay. Um, Tajay's played a lot of meaningful snaps in the NFL and he's out there like all these guys working and uh, trying to take advantage of the opportunity for him. Michael Cunningham. Yes, Arthur, what is your, uh, excuse me, what is your assessment of the, of the receiver group as it stands now? 
Well, Michael, like, like with all these spots, you know, you I, I don't put too much thought in the spring, whether this was year one or the old uh, OTAs of the past. Like I, I think I've gone on record earlier, you know, you can get a lot of uh, false narratives by evaluating just spring. It's just part of the process and learning phase, really, until we play, you know, real football in the preseason or, or have some real practices. Yeah, I can give you a better evaluation. Same hold true with the offensive line group, which could yeah, be a little bit different. Shoot. Absolutely, Michael, especially with the big guys. I mean, we're not in pads. Like I said, we're trying to put our schemes in, trying to be smart, being creative, and as we're trying to develop and get these guys used to communicate, and that is a big factor. But to get an evaluation in the spring, everybody's got their own flavor. But for us as a staff, we're, we're trying to be realistic and understanding what the objective is. Scott Baer. Coach, um, as you go through this this three day uh, mini camp process, are there are there any signs of progress that that um, you might be looking for to like indicate that hey that 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 they're really absorbing these schemes or 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 they are starting to execute better? Are there any kind of telltale signs that this team is uh is uh, making progress? Sure, we evaluate that every day because that is a Scott that is a big part of the, our evaluation. What we're trying to get out of the spring, we're trying to mentally tax these guys. So. Mm-hmm. Yes, you can get that in the, in, the, in the paces we're going at and what we're throwing at them. And that's what we have to evaluate as coaches, you know, how much you want to put in, where are they at, you know, are you uh, starting to get diminishing returns? So, yeah, that's a constant evaluation because every group is different. Every season, every team I've been a part of. Uh, what have you thought of of um, of uh, how your uh, defensive front seven is really um, absorbing Dean's scheme, especially the uh, – the, the uh, guys on defense uh, calling signals, safeties, and linebackers. Yeah, that's, a, that's the challenge. We want those guys to get out there and communicate. Uh, like we know the record will be multiple. Uh, it can obviously change from week to week, but those guys, we want guys that can play multiple spots. And uh, that is a big part of the evaluation there. Communication can we get lined up and we challenge them offensively the same way. Kelly Price. My question's already got to ask. Thanks. Is that time? Hey, Coach, uh, how would you define a successful camp? And I apologize if you answer this. I just had to jump on technical issues. Sure. Um, successful mini camp is, is what I was talking about here. We, it's, it's just another step in, the, in the, our offseason program, our objective, where we're at with the playbook, how much they can absorb. We're still, like I said, in the teaching and developing stage right here. It's going to look very similar to the OTAs we've already had, Zach. You know, we were able to bring them in here uh, yesterday to get them physicals. That's a part of the mandatory mini camp. Uh, like everything, you try to evolve very different. Some of the camps you guys probably covered 12, 13 years ago, uh, that's what the situation is now. So it'll be very similar to the OTA, Zach. And when uh, you get to learn a lot more about your guys when they put the pads on, um, it's kind of two different tempos, two different modes, right? And uh, any, will you have the opportunity to put the pads on during these, this camp? No. I don't want to get uh, fined by the league, and uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to put this team and myself in the situation. As we do let lap, it's happened before. Thank you. We can allow me to put on pads and go out there together. Uh, I'd Mike. love to take some shots. <laughs> Mike Jardy. Arthur, I just wanted to ask you, what sort of drew you to A.J. McCarron, and what do you need to see from him, you know, here in the mandatory minicamp, and then obviously once you put pads on? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, watching A.J., we, uh, you know, he played against us in the uh, Week 17 game in the 19th season. Um Obviously, having TJ here, TJ worked with him in Houston. So that's valuable information when guys on your staff at work, because there's always an unknown when you bring free agents in here. You, know, you talk to people, you work them out, but it's nice when you have somebody that's on your staff that's actually worked with a player before. Uh, but I like what AJ's done so far. He's been around, he's had to, he's played in games, been successful, and uh, it's a good opportunity for him. And, and with regards to Felipe, just, I mean, how much do you want to give him or you want to how, how do you balance, I guess, overwhelming him and but giving him what he needs so he can go out there and actually execute what you want to execute? Sure. I mean, you're evaluating that every day. Uh, you know, we're going to be very demanding of that position. It, it helps when he's he's around somebody like Matt, watches how Matt works, how Matt operates. That's a really important part of somebody's growth and development. It helps when you have veterans that uh, can play at a high level and, and watch them operate. What made, what's made them successful? And continue to make him successful. So that certainly helps. But Felipe's done a nice job of what we've thrown at him. But you're you're evaluating that. You know, at some point, is it is it too much? You know, they're coming from very different systems. That's no knock on anything. 
college football is just the way we're operating and things we're asking a quarterback to do. Got time for a few follow-ups. Steal it. Mute it, bud. You mute it, deal it. Okay, there we go. Hey, Coach, where's Calvin Ridley at? We haven't seen him. Where's he at in the offseason part of it and, um, you know, projecting him for the year? And the five tryout guys, you got two interesting linebackers on that list in uh, Finch and uh, Holland. Yeah, so uh, to answer your question about Calvin, he, he's where like, we have a handful of guys that are at different spots in this offseason. We felt the best decision for them was to put them in a different spot as we're bringing guys along, getting them ready to go and training camp. Calvin's here. He's done a great job. Everything we've asked him to do uh, in the meetings and walkthroughs. And like I said, everybody's at different spots. The biggest objective to let is to make sure we're ready to roll when training camp and ultimately for the season. But we got a handful of guys, D-Let. I know you're out there putting your own depth chart up there and you're uh, counting numbers. Everybody's accounted for, I promise you. Uh, like I said, Dion is excused, but the rest of the guys are here. Um, and they're, like I said, we're, we're at different spots. So that's a, our challenge is to, to evaluate and put them in different uh, phases, what I like to call it, whether they need more time in the weight room, whether they're working on something else inside. Jeff Schultz. Try out. I think I know how you're going to answer this, Arthur, but um, how many how many how many roster changes should we expect like between now and training camp and training camp to the season? Uh, I know you're bringing in a bunch of tryout guys now. You, you said before it's going to be in flux, but since you've got some cap space now, I'm just curious how how much things sort of open up a little bit for you. That's a good question, Jeff. Sorry, d because they kind of you asked that question about the tryout guys. The same thing. And it kind of leads into what Jeff's asking here. So this this roster is always going to be in construction as long as Terry and I are here. You know, we're, we we have different ways to try to acquire players, and we're constantly trying to evaluate where we can improve and using every you know means we have, whether it's the waiver wire or you you know possibly make a trade in camp. I mean, you never know. Every everything's on the table, and so we're constantly looking at that. Um, yeah, Jeff, I could answer you. In other words, I don't want Chris Olson to squirm too much, but certainly you have some cap flexibility now. But you've got to build in, obviously for contingency plans for the season and, and anybody you may have to sign if there were injuries or whatnot. Michael Rothstein. Yeah. Hey, Arthur, uh, as far as your coaching staff, has every, is everybody vaccinated? Are you going to have to make concessions and have some guys work inside or is everybody going to be available coaching staff wise? Everybody on our staff is available. Okay. Uh, and what about players? I mean, there's no, there has been different reports that different teams are getting closer number-wise, vaccination-wise, where do you feel like y'all are at and, and how comfortable are you with where you are? I'm very comfortable where we're at. Uh, you know, all we try to do is provide the information uh, so guys can make their own personal choice and make you know, everything available at themselves. Or, and again, these are all personal choices. And that's kind of where we're at, but we definitely would try to provide it. And I always just try to deal with the facts. I know the facts may not be popular in today's society, but we still try to deal with the facts here and try to educate people. And they got to make a personal choice, and we got to be fine with their personal choice and which we are. But we're in a good spot there. Charles Odom. I'm good, thank you. Scott Bear. Uh, yeah, Coach, I'm. I'm sure that you've. Uh, I'm sorry if you've already been asked this at some point um, during the off-season program. But what's it been like to really work with a guy like Matt? Um, every single day, day in and day out, like you, you like j j just your experience with him learning this scheme in that, um, you know, um, QB room, what has it been like, you know, really getting to know him, uh, th uh throughout this off season program? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a great experience so far. I mean, obviously I had a lot of respect from, for Matt Ryan, uh, I've never had to work with him, but obviously what he's accomplished and sustained at a high level for a long time. And so, it's like every player, they're constantly trying to earn their job and, and understand and, and improve. And Matt's made of the right stuff. Uh, but that relationship as a play caller and a quarterback, Scott, that's really important to me. Uh, no different than it was. I don't compare him to Ryan Tannehill, but that relationship with Ryan was really important. So the relationship with Matt is, is super important for me. If you're going to be the play caller and the quarterback, you got to be on the same. That's just my philosophical approach. Got to be on the same page. Uh, 